with God, but if you're not going out, like the Word of God says, to have fellowship with others, then I think you're just fooling yourself. And so as we come together in one body, we let the peace of God direct us in our hearts to have fellowship with each other. We need to be thankful for that. Anybody else want to read? You can do it again. Yeah. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Hebrews 13, 15. So what does the word continually mean? All the time. All the, All time. the time. In other words, you don't stop. And that the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. You see, what comes out of our mouth is going to reflect what is in our heart. And I, I've seen a lot of even Christian families, the, the things that come out of their mouth is not very pleasing to me. And if it's not pleasing to me, uh, a person that has sinned in my life, can you imagine how it is for a holy God to hear those things come out of your mouth? And even if you're saying the right words, if you're saying, praise the Lord. And I know that there's some people who sometimes I, it, it makes me sick when I hear them because I know them outside of the church walls. And if it makes me nauseated, how do you think God feels? when the filth comes out of people's mouth or righteous words come out of their mouth when their heart is not righteous. I'll do it. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Now, if myself as your pastor can say, do this, like I'm giving you a commandment. I know I can't do that because people don't like to have people tell them what to do. But I would suggest, highly suggest, if you don't know this scripture verse, if you haven't memorized this scripture verse, I challenge you, memorize this one. Write it down. Everybody should have a, a, a pen when you, when you come so that you could write this scripture verse down. But if you don't have it, we have pens. There's no excuse. <laughs> and I can get you some paper. But I want you to start memorizing this and maybe even for the next week read this verse every day. Be anxious for nothing but in everything through prayer and petition. We should be doing that every day, right? Praying to God, reading His Word, and, and, and talking to Him and asking Him on behalf of other people who are, are sick, struggling, and all that. So I, again, I have talked to a lot of people who are struggling. And how can I be thankful for someone who is suffering? Well, for one thing, when other people are suffering, it motivates me to go and minister to them. So I should be thankful that it gives me an opportunity to go and minister to them. You see how the mind works if you know God's Word? And God's Word is always true. It is never failing. And then what happens is whew, peace. the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds 
And I like to insert this word. If you are in Christ Jesus. If you're not in Christ Jesus, you know, it doesn't matter what you, how much you try. It's not going to be any good. See, there's a lot of people out there that are praying to God. But they don't believe in God, so what's the use, right? What we need to do is when we pray to God that we believe the person that we're praying to. It's not just any God out there, right? We need to know God. And how do we know God? By reading His Word. Glenn, here's a simple one for you. <laughs> I thank God for you, Philippians 1.3. You, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. What about the person that you don't like? Stephen Moore. Is there somebody out there that offends you constantly? Start doing that today, from today. There's somebody that offends you or just kind of rubs you wrong. Go out there and say, I thank God for you. I mean it in your heart. Or maybe even, <laughs> this might be a little strange, right? Because of our confusion about what love is. Say to somebody who you don't like, who doesn't like you, especially when they maybe yell, get in your face and yell at you. And mean it from your heart. I love you. It's simple, right? Three words. I love you. But it's the hardest thing for anybody to do if it's coming from the heart. You can say the words, but if you are not, it's, it's not coming from your heart, the other person will know. In fact, sometimes when you say to somebody, I love you, uh, it kind of offends them. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe they'll even get angry at you, even if it's coming from your heart. But who, whose problem is that? That's their, it's on them. But in your heart, you know that God loves you in spite of all the things that you did wrong in your life. And you know what? It didn't stop him from loving you. And God has seen the worst of sins. And there's people out there who you dislike that have done less than all these things that God has seen everybody do. But God says that we need to love our enemies. How? How do we love our enemies? Bless them. And bless them. But we're supposed to love them as we love ourselves. <laughs> now that's kind of hard. I mean, it's easy to go do nice things for other people that do nice things for us, right? But when somebody does bad things to us, you know, it kind of is like against the norm. But if you haven't ever done that before, do good things to those who do you wrong. You will receive a blessing from God and from yourself. And you might even change that person's attitudes for you. See, a lot of times the reason why we have people that are offended with us is because of our attitude and what we radiate. If we radiate hate, evil, that's what they're going to get. And so they don't want to have anything to do with us, even if they might be evil. But when we radiate, radiate good, when they're going through some tough times, guess who they'll come to to talk to? Who wants to read this one? Huh? I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. Psalms 9 1. I will praise you, Lord, with 
all. All. And what does the word all mean? All. <laughs> How do you praise the Lord with everything you got? I mean, you can say, I praise the Lord, right? How many of you, you know, praise the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's sort of like superficial. But may maybe when we actually are praising the Lord with everything we got, it, it might change what we how we praise the Lord. And, and, and we will proclaim the marvelous things that He has done. Has He has has He done any great things? Yes. I mean the reason why we thank Him is because of the marvelous things that He has done. I mean just the creation itself. I mean even even if we're disabled, we still have life, we have breath. I mean, we should be praising him for that. Don woke, uh, walked in this morning and he said he looked in the mirror and he didn't, like, he didn't like what he saw, right? But the thing is that God has made him, right? Yeah. And, and maybe if you're looking in the mirror and you're not liking what you see, try giving thanks. Every day, when you look in the mirror, Lord, thank you for who you made me to be. Amen. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what the Word of God says, right? The psalmist said that. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He, he actually knitted me in my mother's womb. From the time that you are in the womb, He's forming you. And you go through life circumstances and He's like the potter, molds that pottery. That's why I like the song, you know, you are the potter, I'm the clay. Mm -hmm. Mold me and make me. Wow. <laughs> God is not finished with me yet. He's still molding and making me. And I need to praise Him with all my heart. <clears throat> let your roots grow down into Him and let your lives be built on Him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught. And you will overflow with thankfulness. When you allow God's Word to penetrate your whole being, you know what? It's just like, you know, you have a, a bottle of water and you pour, and then you go fill it up again and you pour it in a cup. What's going to happen? Overflow. It's going to overflow. You want God's goodness to overflow in your life so that when you're around other people, it's going to spread. It's contagious. It is. But thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma, the fragrance, of the knowledge of Him, where? Everywhere. Can you imagine if we are doing that to the best that we can? Not just a little bit here and a little bit there. I mean, if I got some air freshener and sprayed it all over, you know, it's different than if I went and I quit, right? But that's what the, the concept here is that when we, no matter where we go, we're giving the fragrance of God and spreading it. And if it's coming from our heart, it won't be a stench. <laughs> if it's just coming from our lips, it might be a stench. There's always, always something to be thankful for. So the next time you're feeling kind of down, in fact, 
like I know Randy does with him when he talks to his people that he counsels with, is make a list. And I've said this too, is make a list every day. Ten things that you're thankful for. And I like to add something, and I say, the next day, so, so the first day you come up with a list of ten things you're thankful for, the next day you make another list. And you cannot repeat the same thing you did the day before. Now, you might think that's pretty difficult, but you know what, there's a never-ending list of things that we can be grateful for, and your mind can get creative. Thank you, Lord, that I woke up this morning. Thank you that I have a warm house, that my, my furnace is working, that, that when I turn on the water, water comes out, and when I flip the, switch, the light switch, the light comes on. I thank you for my pets, I thank you for my family, I thank you I mean, go on and on and on. So I challenge you, so not only memorize that scripture verse, but come up with a thankful list every day and see how that will change your attitude. Father in heaven, we thank you so much. And we, we, we are grateful for who you are. That even though we deserve the, the worst penalty. <laughs> we even deserve wor worse than what you went through on the cross. That you have taken that away and paid for what we deserve. Help us to be thankful for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Amen.